Welcome to House of Color, I'm Linda Davis. So thanks for taking a few minutes just to watch this video before you come. Um, just knowing a little bit of information will make your appointment a lot more fun and you'll get a lot more out of it. So when you get here, I'm going to be draping you in some colors and you're gonna watch yourself change um, right before your eyes in the mirror. And I just want you to understand why that is. So the color analysis method that we use at House of Color is based on the science of color. That's why it works. And it's actually based on some work that was done out of a school called the Bauhaus. Now this research is about 100 years old. Um, and at that time, the master of painting and an instructor there was a man named Johannes Itten. And he and his colleagues decided that they wanted to research color down to its core. And it's some of their findings that we're gonna be using in your color analysis appointment. So a few kind of key concepts came out of that that I'd like you to know. Um, the first thing is based on primary colors. You'll remember that primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. So um, we can't make primary colors, but every color that you see is made from those primary colors. So based on those primary colors, color can be divided into four different types. So every color that you, that, you, know, that you know of will go into at least one of these four quadrants. So color divides into four different types. Um, every color there is in the universe will go into at least one of these four quadrants. So I wanna explain that to you just a little bit. Um, and the first way it's going to divide is based on whether a color is warm or cool. So this red is a true red. So it has no yellow, it has no blue. Remember those primary colors. So this particular red, a, a, primary red is one that everybody can wear, at least to dabble in it. Now I may find you a better red when you're here, um, but the reason why it works for everyone is because it doesn't have any yellow, it doesn't have any blue, and so it will harmonize with all the colors. So if I had it on the color wheel, I actually would be placing it right here in the center of the wheel. And you can see as I move it around, it doesn't look really out of place anywhere. So that sits right there, but if I was to take a little bit of, let's say, yellow, that other primary color, do you see how the red changes a little bit? It kind of comes more like what I'm wearing, and you can see how it goes a little bit warmer. It's a little bit more of an orangey red. So if I take this one, you'll see it with these warm colors that sit up here on the top of the color wheel, it looks just fine. So it looks really bright and beautiful. But watch what happens when I move it down here with these cool colors. It goes a little orangey and inexpensive and garish. Um, it belongs and harmonizes up here, and it really doesn't belong or harmonize down here. So let's take that same true red, and this time let's add a little bit of blue to the mix. So I'm gonna drop just a little bit of blue into my red, and you'll see how it goes a little bit more of a burgundy red or a pinkish red. And so watch again, you'll see how when I put this up here on my color wheel, while this color looks beautiful down here in the blue base colors, it goes cold up here and it goes really harsh. So that really kind of explains to you in a very simple term what I mean by a yellow based color or a warm color. We use those um, terms interchangeably or a blue based color or a cool color. Now I always like to point out while we're here, do you see how I have yellow down here in the blue base colors? And actually I have blue up here in the yellow base colors. So I'm not restricting you and telling you that you, really there's very few colors I would say that, you, that don't belong to you. I'm really determining what kind of that you, that best you of color is for you. So take a look at these yellows up here. Do you see how they're golden and they're sunny? Whereas down here, these yellows have a little bit more blue to them, um, which means that they harmonize better down here. They'll look faded um, with these warm colors, um, but having that little bit of coolness to them, it doesn't look as sunny, does it? Um, will really make it harmonize and look better with these blue base colors. So the other way that color divides has to do with um, if a color is more clear, vivid, bright, or if it's more blended and muted. So let's take a look down here in the cool colors first. So the winters are the clear, bright, vivid colors, 
and the summers are the more blended muted colors. So let me explain that just a little bit further. You'll see how when you look at these colors, there's this sharp, clear contrast. And when you go over to the summer colors, it's like I've taken a little bit of smoke and mixed it in. Um, I've just kind of, it's got a little bit of a haze to it or it's been faded down a little bit. Um, or maybe more accurately, it has a little gray mixed in. So it just has a little bit more softer airbrush look to it. And the winter colors are these very clear, vivid, bright colors. So this blue is a beautiful um, winter blue. Blue. And you'll see when I sit it over here, it just harmonizes and looks fabulous with these colors. But it goes a little bit strong over here and it makes these softer colors look a little bit dull. Whereas this bright blue, also a beautiful color, um, will harmonize just beautifully with these summer colors. It looks nice and bright but it goes just a tad dull over here with the winter colors. So the winters are the clear and bright and the summers are the more blended muted. So on the top half of the color wheel, um, we have the warm colors. And these spring colors are the clear, bright, vivid colors, and the autumn colors are the blended and muted, um, which tends to confuse everybody, because when you look around in the autumn, you see all these vibrant colors. Um, but these spring colors, if you take a look at them, they're fresh colors. They're clear, light, bright, and there's a real freshness to it. Whereas in the autumn, while they're very bright, some of them are very bright, um, it's a richer bright, isn't it? It's like we've taken some earthiness or some brown and mix it in to kind of rich it up. And so what happens is when I have these spring brights, you can see I'm wearing something that's a spring bright. I, I sit in this quadrant of the color palette and you can see how these bright vivid colors sit beautifully over here. But look how this goes a little bit inexpensive and, and lightweight um, or even a little bit childish over here when I sit it with the autumn colors. This autumn pink, um, and autumns have these really um, kind of softer, more corally types of pinks. Um, do you see how this looks really rich and expensive and elegant? And that's how it will read on an autumn. But it looks dull over here with my spring colors and even will look dull with what I'm wearing today. Um, and so autumns would be the, the blended muted colors and springs would be the clear brights. So the season names actually came from Johannes Itten. So winter, summer, spring, and autumn. It has absolutely nothing to do with you know, what your look is for a particular season. Um, and so the names actually can give you a little bit of help in remembering what those colors look like. So the winter colors are cool colors, but they're, remember they're clear, vibrant colors. Um, winter is a time of high contrast, and a sharp white and a true black sit in the winter palette. So white and black, scientifically speaking, aren't really colors. Now I realize you can order a t-shirt in black or white, um, but they, um, you know, but based on a definition of a color, it's an exact wave. And black and white is really all color or no color. It's as much contrast as you can get, which is why it needs to sit here in the winter palette because that is something that winters need. Winter is a time of high contrast. Think about the deep dark shadows, the bright icy colors, um, and so, and winters need that. Now other seasons can wear contrast, but winters specifically need win um, a high contrast. So actually if you're a winter, I'm going to be telling you that your best look will include a dark, a light, and then I want something, at least some little pop of a bright, both in a lipstick, but also in something that you wear. Um, because you need that to really um, look, you know, kind of show up and be vibrant. Whereas the summer colors, um, think about in the summertime, I, I have this bird house that we paint and I always have to repaint it to keep it nice and bright um, because the, the summer sun just beats on it and fades it down. And that's really what's happened over here, isn't it? They're still cool, but the summer, you know, because it's faded down or it's softened or grayed out like colors tend to do um, in the summer. When I go up to the yellow base colors, those spring colors are those clear, vivid, bright, and think about it, it's very fresh colors. Some of those flowers that come out in the spring, the grass colors are these clear, fresh colors. Um, whereas in the autumn, things do start to go a little bit richer. Um, they're just a little bit more, that autumnal look has more richness to it. Um, and so that's kind of a great way to remember, you know, the, at least the, the description of those seasons. So you may have noticed that the yellow base colors um, are framed in a yellow metal 
and the blue base colors are framed in silver. And you will actually have metal colors that look great on you. Now don't worry, if you like the man, keep the ring. Uh, but this will relate to not only jewelry, um, it will relate to things like the metals that you wear. Think about on your purse, you usually have metal. It could be on buttons or zippers. Um, even on eyeglasses. It will look more expensive when you wear a metal in your color. So I have some neutral colors that are warm and I have some neutral colors that are cool. And I want to show you um, just how the metals look with them. So I have here some gold and a creamy pearl that would be warm. And I have here a whiter pearl and you know silver, white, gold, platinum, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it looks pretty good, but watch what happens when I change it. So do you see how this goes really cheap and plasticky when I'm putting it with the warm colors? And this goes kind of dirty and brassy looking with the cool colors. Much better, more expensive. So another important concept that came from Itten's work has to do with how our brain perceives color. So one of the things they discovered is they can change the way the brain perceives color based on the colors that they surround it with. So this is a book that's long out of print of his, but it does have some great examples. So take a look how the center color is the exact same color, but do you see how based on the colors that it's surrounded in, it looks different. And that's what I'm doing with you. I will be surrounding you in colors um, to find out how you change in color. Now, if this was on a pillow, you may not really care how it comes across. But when it's on you, you will like the way you look in colors that harmonize with your coloring. And we'll see some negative things come out when I put you in colors that don't harmonize with you. Itten and his colleagues may get the credit for discovering this science, but Hollywood gets the credit for bringing it to the things that we put on ourselves. So about the time that film was changing over from black and white to color, there was a man named Robert Dorr that was working there and he noticed that his leading ladies would look better um, from one day to another. They'd look younger, fresher, brighter, um, or even from one costume change to another. And that's what really led them to apply Itten's principles to clothing and what we wear. So Hollywood still uses this today to make someone look more attractive or unattractive, more likable and approachable um, or dislikable, more trustworthy or more sinister. And even to communicate, for example, as um, per their character develops, um, they can use color to tell that story. So people often wonder when they come if I can tell what they are just by looking at them. And the answer is no. Um, and that's because we have so many different colorings and people can be really tricky. I really do need to watch how you change in those drapes to determine your season. So it, your, your natural skin and your hair and your eyes will play into this, but those aren't always very distinctive. And so I rely very heavily on what's called your undertones. Now that's a term that people kind of, you know, throw around a bit, but what it really is, is the color that actually shows through. So your skin has some translucency to it, but there are some colors that um, will kind of show through that skin. And that's why someone can have more of a yellowish skin and be either yellow based or blue based or, or the other way around. They can be more pinky or red and they might go really rosy in those blue based colors or like me, they may go very cold. And so I'm watching to see how you change. Um, people um, surprise me all the time. I have such a range. You know, winters can range everything where from a deep, dark African American skin tone to light blue eyed and blonde. And so that's what the process will vet out for us. So when you get here, here's what your appointment will look like. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drape you and I'm going to figure out are you warm or are you cool? Once I have that figured out, we're going to figure out are you the more clear and bright or blended and muted um, based on the color, half of the color where will you sit. For women or those that are interested, we'll stop at that point and we'll put a little bit of makeup on. It's called 90 second makeup. Um, it's a very fast, easy process, but I want you to see how powerful makeup can be when we use the right color on you. It's like the color does half the work for you, so you don't need to wear as much, but it looks much better on you. I like to have a before picture. You'll be all camera ready. You're going to have makeup on, but I find that that before picture of you with, well, we won't have lipstick on yet, um, but with 
out color and then the after picture with you in your, one of your lipsticks um, for women and all of your colors, um, you'll see that not only do you look better, but you are so much more visible. You show up. Um, it just makes all the difference in the world. It can even change the way your coloring reads. Eyes can go brighter, skin goes healthier. And so that's why I want that before after for you to reference later. So then we're gonna pick three lipsticks for women and I'll explain why three when we get there. And last, we're gonna go through a rating process. And that allows me to um, actually put each of all of the 36 colors that I have here on you. Now they represent, of course, a much larger uh, number of colors that you can wear. But I wanna find out, first of all, I'll kind of show you what your best neutrals are, where some of your best of the best colors are, and give you some great information on how to use your colors. So if you use tanner, please be sure it's worn off your face before you get here. But don't worry if you have a natural tan. You will tan in your own colors. And then you may wanna wear some something that doesn't have a really high collar like a turtleneck or a really uh, stand-up collar just because I'll be putting things around your neck. So I can't wait to help you discover the colors that are best on you. I'll see you soon.